皆さんこんにちは。ご紹介いただきました。Uh, Human Rights Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I, I am Secretary General of Human Rights Now. I'd like to talk a bit about the organization.、Uh, in Asia, so far, we have been doing, working about the human rights issues in the Asian region mainly.、Um, but after the March 11th,、uh, 2011 accident, we realized that、uh, we need to look into the human rights infringement in Japan regarding Fukushima. And I personally do not have scientific background, so therefore I have been working together with various scientists, and、uh, so therefore we have been active thanks to these supports. From my part,、um, my subject that I'd like to talk about is the Grover recommendation from the United Nations、uh, on the 27th of May 2012. The special report on the right to health. Um, by Mr. Anan Grover was submitted to the United Nations.、Um, this is based on the mission that Mr. Grover took,、uh, undertook from 14th to 26th November the previous year、um, on the right to health of the resident after the Fukushima nuclear power plant accident. This report has been submitted to the Human Rights Council of the United Nations.、Uh, I'd like to talk a bit about the background、uh, after the March 11th disasters.、Um, And the accident,、uh, we had the issues of the 20 millisievert, and we, we had concerns about the health、uh, issues of the residents around the area. And as such, and because of such concerns,、uh, we have been discussing with various parties and stakeholders who have been active in this area. And therefore, jointly with these NGOs, we have submitted a request to the United Nations that they come and look at the serious human rights infringement situation in Fukushima. We provided the necessary information, background information to the United Nations. And、uh, in response from the United Nations, Uh, they have appointed a special rapporteur, a special rapporteur in、uh, the right to health, Mr. Anand Grover, that was selected and appointed by the Human Rights Council. You might not know the, how the United Nations mission system works. And、that you have the General Assembly underneath, and you have various commissions and councils, including the Human Rights Council, which is in charge of human rights issues. Within the Human Rights Council,、uh, there are various appointed、uh, experts in various areas that are experts in charge of monitoring various human rights situations in various regions and countries.、Uh, We have DPRK,、uh, human rights issue, etc., for example, in terms of country missions. And in terms of the subject missions, we have right to health, for example, or the death penalty, etc., etc. Within the theme, what is most, what seems The most serious cases of infringement are the targets of such、uh, mission.、Uh, so the special reporter would visit such mission,、uh, the regions, for example, or areas,、uh, to monitor the situation locally and eventually make a recommendation in his or her report. This is the system of the United Nations. So, this, unlike a periodical review that is undertaken every year, this is a, a one off、um, an ad hoc、uh, monitoring of the situation in Japan that took place in the single mission last year.、Uh, Mr. Grover is a very authorit authoritative figure. Uh, and so, therefore, the recommendation that comes from this very authoritative procedure is、uh, very well regarded as well. What we believe is important is the following IAEA and WHO have also undertaken monitoring and studies in Fukushima, but sometimes they、uh, directly use the information provided by the Japanese government. And IAEA and WHO also have signed an agreement regarding the radioactivity matter and radioactive issues. So, therefore, they have a clear division of labor and responsibility beforehand. 
So therefore, that's why we needed an additional independent mission and research, and that's what we deemed when we made the request. In terms of the, the right to health in Japan, Uh, Japan is the signatory of the uh, United Nations uh, International Covenant on Economic and Social and Cultural Rights. Uh, and uh, within this uh, covenant, uh, there is a clear stipulation of the right to health. And so therefore, the Japanese government uh, is uh, required to observe and respect the right to health of its residents under this um, international covenant of the United Nations that they have signed. Currently, Japan is also one of the, uh, the uh, member countries uh, in the board of the United Nations uh, Human Rights Council, which selected Mr. Grover, uh, appointed Mr. Grover, and that is why its responsibility is even clearer. Um, so, as such, uh, Mr. Grover came to Japan last November in his mission. Many people are here today who have participated or supported this mission. Uh, he has visited uh, in various areas in Fukushima University, including the prefectural government and the Fukushima Medical University, various uh, municipalities and the TEPCO as well, uh, various, as well as many other municipalities in Fukushima prefecture and other areas nearby. Uh, they have also visited and talked with, uh, for example, self-evacuees and other experts as well. Uh, this is the picture of Mr. Grover, the, one of the interpreters here also uh, participated in the mission. Um, this is the this, this, uh, scenes from the Un Gene Geneva, um, the May Human Rights Council session. Um, that took place in Geneva, Switzerland. Uh, this was a quite a remarkable um, report uh, that was submitted by Mr. Grover. Uh, this looks, but I'd like to, before I get into that, I'll talk about the situation of human rights uh, situation after the accident in Fukushima. Uh, the, after the accident, um, and according to the government uh, report, they said that, that the, um, the emission of the radiation was 168.5 times higher than the Hiroshima. Uh, and as such, uh, there was a considerable risk to the human health uh, from radioactive particles. But that said, that the countermeasures that has been shown by the government is not sufficient. Um, after the accident, um, they have changed the threshold uh, criteria for uh, of um, the exposure of the public from one millisievert to twenty millisievert per year, um, and that it was utilized as the evacuation criteria standard. And uh, in any areas that has um, level below twenty millisievert per year, there hasn't been ba basically no public support on subsidies. And from without any economical means, uh, people cannot make a choice of self-evacuation. Many governments are re uh, canceling uh, or discontinuing uh, their order for evacuation in areas that are measures less than 20 millisievert per year, uh, and people are forced to return. Um, the government also claims that uh, low-level ionizing radiation of under 100 millisievert is safe, uh, and so minimizing the impact of possible low-level radiation. Um, the old government policy is based on that without reflecting people's opinions. P people uh, also, uh, uh, the government also believes that under 20 millisievert, uh, people are safe, so therefore there is uh, insufficiency in terms of government measures for radioactive protection or um, health survey and health um, examination. Uh, especially, uh, risks are perceived by children and women in terms of serious health consequences. Uh, this is something that uh, all of the people who are involved and who are knowledgeable of the situation feels. Uh, the actual content of the recommendation from the Special Rapporteur is the following. 
to take measures to protect the people's health uh, from the human rights perspective um, and from the perspective of people who are most vulnerable, uh, as long as the actual risks of a low level ionizing radiation is not proven. And in order to do so, um, the uh, special rapporteur requested a drastic, drastic policy change to support the residents. Now, I would like to introduce you the actual content of the report by the special rapporteur. Um, it's all numbered. Uh, there are various recommendations. This is recommendation number 48. Um, this number 48 is regarding low-level ionizing radiation. Uh, Japanese government um, has communicated to the special rapporteur that there is no excessive risk of cancer of under 100 millisievert um, and that it is safe for people to live in an area with uh, annual radiation of 20 millisievert or less. That was a guarantee given by the Japanese government to the special rapporteur. However, according to the epidemiological research um, of the long-term low-level ionizing radiation, um, it is said that there is no threshold in terms of uh, 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 non-solid cancers like leukemia uh, from exposure to radiation. And in terms of the solid cancer, um, there is a linear uh, increase in the risk um, that continue to increase throughout a person, a patient's lifetime. Of course, we have experts in this area, so I don't need to go into the details. As for the number 49 recommendation about the dose limit, uh, current uh, policies that are intr introduced by the Japanese government uh, should be based on scientific evidences. And it, it, it is an policies need to be implemented so that uh, it minimizes the um, interference um, to people's um, right to enjoy and exercise the right to health. Um, in, uh, when setting a threshold for um, dose, um, radiation dose, uh, a special consideration should be given to uh, pregnant women and children uh, to minimize the impact to the people's right to health. Uh, furthermore, because there is a possibility of a negative health impact from low-level radiation to evacuees, um, the only uh, uh, encouragement to return should only be given all, it only if the radiation level um, is reduced to less than one millisievert per year and to a low level as possible. Uh, this is the radiation exposure limit recommendation number 78 uh, and 79. So these are more concrete recommendations to the Japanese government. Um, so be, uh, the government should base itself on the latest scientific evidence uh, and without taking into consideration the risk and economic uh, risk benefit um, and based on the uh, human rights, um, government should adopt the uh, annual radiation limit to less than one millisievert per year. Um, and 79A uh, talks about decontamination, that you know, uh, to come up with, a cl uh, as soon as possible, a clear plan uh, with the time frame of reducing uh, the radiation level to less than one millisievert per year. Uh, 78 B and C is regarding uh, the radiation exposure as well, uh, regarding uh, uh, children's exposure. And also 28 C is utilizing uh, very effective data. The Japanese government has set up monitoring posts, as you know, in various Fukushima area, and they have data coming up from monitoring posts. But as uh, you might already know if you visited these posts, uh, if you remove yourself slightly a uh, few meters or a few hundred meters away from monitoring posts, the air dose is completely different and it does not reflect the actual air dose level um, of these areas. Uh, with so relying solely on this information would put children and other residents um, into a considerable risk. So therefore, there is a great, as such, um, a sense of suspicion and distrust um, in the data that are obtained from such monitoring posts. 
Now I'd like to move on to talk about the recommendation 77 regarding health surveys and health examination. Um, there hasn't been any health checks or examinations other than for children's uh, thyroid, uh, pediatric thyroid cancer. Um, but uh, the recommendation stipulates that there should be more comprehensive and overall health monitoring of people that might be affected. Um, and that health monitoring should also take place for people who live uh, in areas over of over one millisievert per year. As for the health check, it should not look only into the thyroid cancer, but into other areas, including blood sampling, etc. Now, uh, f recommendation 77 regarding health checks. Um, H, uh, the whole body counters and internal radiation uh, checkup um, uh, should be undertaken to all residents, evacuees, and people outside of Fukushima Prefecture as well. Uh, later, there will be also a mention about the new act that was enacted by the Japanese government on 2012 um, regarding the uh, the ch children victims, um, the act on protection and support for the victims of a nuclear power plant accident. Uh, the, there's a recommendation regarding this act. Uh, there's a concern, it's expressed in the report, that uh, no concrete measures has been taken and implemented based even though the act has already been um, adopted. And finally, 81 talks about the to need to guarantee the residents' participation in all implementation of all policies of the government uh, to involve the people that are directly impacted and affected. Um, C. Uh, 82, yes, recommendation 82 also talk about the need to reflect the, um, the re and involve the residents and the vulnerable people in the society in the decision-making process um, in terms of policies regarding the starting the nuclear power, restarting the power, uh, designating the evacuation area, etc., etc. One millisievert per annum. Uh, should be really the basis um, of the uh, guaranteeing the human rights um, uh, regarding health. And the, the, in the that sense, the recommendation that the report clearly stated that. I would like to encourage all of you to read the report thoroughly. Um, the response of the government is quite problematic. Uh, have, having read the published report, a very detailed response from the Japanese government was issued and when we, if I may summarize that response, it, it has is very um, a sense of it, it attacks the content of the report that everything has been dealt with, etc. Uh, for the concrete recommendations that are given to the government, uh, the response is that it has already been taken care of or responded. that just to make it seem like uh, the problem has been dealt with, um, the uh, global recommendation suggests that because there is an unknown element in terms of scientific impact of low-level ionizing radiation, we should be careful. But uh, the reverse um, refutation is made by the government that there is already a lot of scientific evidences and therefore we need to use those evidences to make judgments. Um, based on the Hiroshima and Nagasaki data, uh, under 100 millisievert, um, the impact of uh, radiation to human health is non-existent. It's believed to be not serious or non-existent. And this is actual quotation from the government's um, uh, publication. Uh, regarding one millisievert um, threshold, um, The recommendation suggests that the uh, uh, act on protection and support for the victims should base itself on one millisievert. But um, the government requests that this phrase should be deleted because it is based on a 
uh, a personal view. Um, and overall, the government's response is that it is unscientific. The recommendation is unscientific. It's not acceptable. As you already know, the, what the government's claim regarding Hiroshima Nagasaki is not based on a fact. In the research, uh, research on Hiroshima Nagasaki, um, the Hibakusha uh, that started in 1950, it clearly shows that the government has no uh, basis and evidence uh, in their claim. Uh, and furthermore, the government's response is in clear contradiction to their previous and historic uh, response to Hiroshima Nagasaki as well. So therefore, governments um, should really base their stance on protecting the resident and uh, minimize all possible risks um, of radiation to residents' health. Nevertheless, their stance is that they disregard and um, deny all possible risks of low-level radiation. Um, and they are ignoring data scientific evidence as well, or our internationally established understandings and scientific knowledge as well. I'm running out of time to cover everything, but what I would like to reiterate here is that you would read the global recommendation and spread the words regarding the importance of global recommendation. Uh, many people do not know uh, the existence of this report and recommendation, so I hope that you would help us in spreading the words and making its presence known. Just one announcement. Uh, at the same time as the issue of the global recommendation, the United Nations um, Scientific Committee is, um, draft version report has also been submitted. Asahi newspaper and other newspaper in Japan has talked about this uh, issue of this report from the United Nations Scientific Commission. Japanese government also talks about the discrepancies in the content of global recommendation and uh, uh, the other report from UN. The UN Scientific Commission actually will be making a report and submitting the report to the UN General Assembly on the 25th of October. Um, uh, and based at the same time, there will be various bodies, for example, board at, uh, the nuclear bodies in the Germany uh, and other uh, NGOs and organizations will be submitting their comments um, in refutation of this um, report from the UN Scientific Committee. I hope that we will do the same in Japan coming uh, from Japanese NGOs and organizations as well. We will be doing likewise. So uh, we need to make sure to uh, let our stance be known uh, to the international society. Um, on 25th of October, uh, we will have a special session uh, inviting um, Mr. Anand Grover in New York as well. Uh, we will be there as well as Human Rights Now. And uh, at the occasion, I hope that we'll be able to invite the head, the representative of the UN Scientific Commission, Ansgar. So I hope that you participate in our efforts ongoing. From the human rights perspective, I hope that our